We are grateful unto God tonight for granting us the privilege of coming together as his children, that we might worship, praise, and magnify his holy and his divine name. Certainly what we have come to do here this night, and it's certainly good to see each and every one of you who have come to be with us as well, praying that you have come with the express purpose of magnifying the Lord our God, because God is worthy and he is deserving of all of our praise. And certainly if we worship him in spirit and in truth, we know that our God will be well pleased. Yes. We're praying tonight that if there are those who are not members of the body of Christ in the audience, that you will grant us at this time an attentive ear and be attentive to the things that will be taught from the word of Almighty God. And we pray that upon understanding that your walk with God and your life is not according to the Bible, we want you to change tonight because tonight could very well be your last night. Yeah. Let me direct your attention to Matthew chapter 13. And if you will, please stand with me for the reading of the word of Almighty God. That's Matthew chapter 13, mm -hmm. verses 45 and verse number 46. And I would ask that you would read these two verses aloud with me, please. The Bible says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. God bless you. You may be seated. May the Lord add a blessing to those who are the readers. Truly unto those who are the heaters of his holy Amen. and his divine will. Yes. Tonight we want to talk about the pearl of great price. We want to talk about the pearl Pearls, of great price. Yes. A lot can be said in a very few words. The Lord, the Master teacher yes, sir. took two short verses of this particular discourse and taught us that the kingdom of heaven is so valuable and precious that it is worth giving up everything that we have yes. in order to obtain it. Yes, sir. Notice here that Jesus says this merchant man or this man of business was looking or seeking for goodly pearls. He was looking for some choice pearls, not just any old pearl that he would come across, right, right. but this man was looking for the best of the best. He was looking for the finest of the finest. He was in search of that which individuals would pay top dollar just to obtain it and buy it. He was probably a tradesman who was looking for his one big score. And when he found these pearls, when he did happen to find these choice and precious pearls, the man's mindset was to sell them for a large profit and probably take his ease, eat, drink, and be merry. History records that various divers would take their dive into the Red Sea and in well as the Persian Gulf to recover various types of pearls and then they would sell these pearls unto merchant men who in turn would sell them as jewelry and pearls were sometimes were very large sums of money and pearls were literally counted among the most prized of possessions. Right. So it's not surprising tonight that the Lord would use the worth of sought after pearls to show how valuable the kingdom of heaven really is. 
But now the main point of this particular parable lies not in the ability of the merchant man who realizes that he has something so valuable. It doesn't lie in his ability to look for the pearls. It doesn't lie in his desire to have a choice pearl. But the main point of the parable lies in this man's awareness that what he had was greater than anything else he could ever look for. This man goes and sells everything that he has because he realizes that he cannot find anything better than what he has right now. Remember now the man was looking for pearls, plural, but he came across one pearl, singular, which the Bible describes as being a pearl of great price. This man was looking for more than one where he could make a considerable profit, but he didn't come across a string of pearls. This man came across one pearl that was worth everything that he was looking for. This particular pearl was no ordinary pearl. It was a pearl that was of an exceptionally high value. It was very costly and precious. And this man who was looking for pearls, plural, came across this one pearl, singular, and he ended his search for the rest of the pearls. <laughs> the man recognized that he had everything he needed in that one pearl. He didn't need to go another further. He recognized that everything that he wanted, everything that he desired, was encompassed in this one pearl. And so he ended his search for the pearls of great price. He was willing, as the Bible informs us, to do whatever it took to possess it. Therefore, he went and sold everything that he had. And he bought that one pearl, not to resell, but to have it as his own possession. The weight of the parable rests in not in the worth of the pearl, but it rests in the man's ability to recognize that he had everything that he needed to be happy. Jesus is telling us that the kingdom of heaven is just as precious as that pearl. It's worth whatever it is you have to give up just to have it. And you need to realize how valuable it really is. And that's the crux of what Jesus wanted us to understand concerning this pearl of great price. The kingdom of heaven. What God has for his children is of such a value that when you've been blessed to have it, don't you sell it to nobody and for nothing. You got the best that heaven has to offer. You got everything that you need to be happy. You have everything that you need for your life to be fulfilled. And so if you've got Jesus, you've got it all and you don't need nothing else. The Bible is explaining to us that the pearl is compared to how valuable and how the worth of God's kingdom ought to be to us. It ought to be to the extent that when I realize I got it, I ought to give up everything else I have just to have it. As a matter of fact, Jesus demanded that. Look at Matthew chapter 19. At the beginning of verse number 27. The Lord knows how precious what we are being offered is. But the thing is tonight, do we know how precious? What we have is, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 19, yeah, and beginning at verse number 27, then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and have followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And that's what people want to know in this day and time. <laughs> Lord, I've given up this. I've given up drinking. I've given up smoking. I've given up chasing folk in the streets. I've given up gambling. I done gave up all my, what I thought was fun. Hmm. To have you. Amen. What should I have in return? That's what we're looking for. We may not say it, but our actions show. That's exactly what we're looking for. We always question as to why we have to give up this and why I have to give up that. Why can't I do this anymore? Why can't I do that anymore? Jesus said because what you are giving is return is so valuable that you need to give up everything you are accustomed to just to have it. Yes. Peter said, what should I have in return? Hmm. Notice the Lord's answer. Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken 